welcome everybody back to my PowerPoints. Everyone seemed to like them a little better, so hopefully this will help you. Oh, there we go. And hopefully you can hear me quite well. Please read chapter and we're doing mobility. So this is an extremely important module. So when you're looking at doing it, make sure that you're reading everything and it is clear because you can hurt yourself um, very um, badly and never work again if you are um, not using your musculoskeletal system properly. So this presentation will help you for your exam and when we are back in the classroom also and it must be completed prior to going back to class. So sooner you get it done the better. The musculoskeletal system is in chapter 17 on page 277. I'm just going to give you a quick overview. You should have answered your um, handout on pre-mobility, so um, this is just a review. So we are going to look at the purpose of the musculoskeletal system, of course, gives us framework, allows for movement. It also produces heat with muscle contraction. So all muscles can do basically is contract and then that's it. Um, they relax. It does protect us and um, we're going to look at that more in detail. So that's the purpose of our musculoskeletal system. It gives us our shape, gives us the ability to move, produces heat and protects us. The bones in our body, there's 206 bones in the body. Um, they give us shape and support. They store minerals and salts. They also are large bones produce blood cells and assist with blood formation. They also contain about 50% water. And as we age, they increase in lime and become very brittle. And we also, the connective tissue, there's hard connective tissue um, in our body also. Long bones, you're going to find those, the femur, tibia, and fibula. When you're looking at the skip the at the skeleton to remember them the femur is the big one up top of course tibia is the thick bone and fibula is the fine bone so when you're doing the um, skeleton looking at the skeleton they're easy to remember if you remember that little bit of information tibia Think thick one and fibula is the fine bone. Also, we're looking at the humerus. Remember, the ulna is the bone that runs on the uh, by the pinky, but a radial pulse we always take and it runs by the thumb. So that's how you tell the difference between the radius and the ulna. Short bones, they allow for skill and movement. We have them in our hands, in our fingers, and our feet. So we're looking at carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. Phalanges are fingers and toes. And then we have tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges as the toes on our feet. So looking at those are short bones. And they really allow for us to move very quickly and easily. We have flat bones and they protect our organs. So our ribs, our cranium, our pelvis, scapula is the back or what we call the shoulder blade. Clavicle is this bone right here. Can't see mine, but in some people you can. I have extra adipose tissue just covering it to protect it. And then the sternum, of course, is the um, bone right here that protects us. So flat bones are really for protecting our organs. Irregular bones, um, they are in the vertebrae and the spine. So the spine, the sacrum, and the coccyx. The coccyx you're going to see is our tailbone. Sacrum is basically above our coccyx, and then we have our vertebrae. It allows us for degrees of movement. That's how come we can turn like this. Wonderful um, irregular bones, and we need those. Muscles, we have about 500, over 500 muscles in the bones, and they actually give us movement, they maintain posture, and they produce heat. So they only contract and relax, and as I said, when we create heat, which uses calories, example, or running, or shivering is a rapid general skeletal muscle contraction. So when we're cold, we will actually shiv shiver, and you can't stop that shivering. It's to produce heat um, when we are cold. So you will see that when you're looking at your um, muscles. 
When you're looking at a chicken bone or a chicken that's raw, you're going to actually see skeletal muscle. Or if you look at a, a roast, you'll see also that skeletal muscle is attached to bones and it is very much um, looks like um, cells or strips. Smooth muscle is involuntary. So skeletal muscle, of course, is voluntary. It's attached to bones. Smooth muscle, muscle is involuntary. We cannot consciously control these. Stomach, intestines, blood, vessels. And cardiac muscle is involuntary, but it is striated in appearance, only found in the heart, and is really quite amazing. Um, but it is an involuntary striated muscle, only one that is striated. So when you're eating your um, roast beef, you'll see it has strips in it. If it's cooked and it pulls apart, pulled pork, you'll see that also. Um, that basically is skeletal muscle. And involuntary muscle, if you have a really good sausage um, made at the bakery, no, not at the bakery, at the butcher shop, you will see that typically it has um, smooth muscle as the intestine lining. We have ligaments, ligaments, bones to bones, tendons, muscle to bones. So if you think about the Achilles tendon, it's actually connected to the back here of your muscle and to your big bone on your heel. So ligaments hold bones to bones and tendons hold muscle to bones. Now, if you're looking at what they look like, if you've ever had a turkey leg and you see that you strip the meat off of it, those thick, um, they kind of look like bones, but they're actually thick tissues that fit and hold that meat on the bone. That's actually a ligament, or sorry, a tendon. And if you look at ligaments, they're also kind of that where they hold the thigh bone to the um, hip bone. Cartilage, if you look at a chicken bone, you'll see it's at the end of the bone. It's that white kind of gristle. And what it does is it actually cushions and prevents our bones from rubbing together. Very important um, when you're looking at um, knees and legs that you have cartilage, which I have no more of. Joints are where two or more bones meet, and you are going to see they allow for movement. As I said, the cartilage cushions the joint, and in that joint there is synovi there's a syno around each joint is a synovial membrane. And in that synovial membrane, there's synovial fluid. So if you're cutting chicken up this week and you cut the thigh and the leg off, you'll see that there's some liquid that comes out. That actually is synovial fluid on that chicken, just like we would have, and it lines the joint and secrete synovial fluid for lubrication so that basically the bones aren't that are not um, going cartilage on cartilage but they are not going bone on bone that's when bone on bone hurts so basically it looks like this little diagram around each joint so every joint in our finger has that every joint in our arm has every joint in our vertebrae has a synovial membrane around it and it basically greases us up there are three types of joints, and I'm not talking about the other joints that you may have in your world. I'm talking about the ones in the, multi in the um, musculoskeletal system. We have a ball and socket joint, and it allows for movement in all areas. So looking at your shoulder joint, your hip joint moves in every direction. You have your elbow joints or hinge joints, phalanges too. They can bend a little bit more, but mostly you'll see hinge joints in your elbows and your knees. And pivots joints allow you to turn from side to side like uh, our head. Now, if you're wondering why you have an owl, looks like they can turn their head around. Really what they have, they can't. They have longer leg, well, they can, but they have longer ligaments and tendons allowing their head to move further than ours does. That's just a little side bar for the day. You're, oh, we're gonna stop here because we'll look at the nervous system in our next YouTube. So stop.